<laughs> you gotta be kidding me, man. Oh my gosh, that is great. Octaves here, just use octaves. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's so good, that's so good. <laughs> This video is brought to you by the Sinfera community on Discord. We offer a welcoming group environment, the Assemblage community compilation series, and so much more. Sign up today and join us. Invite link is in the description. The frequency spectrum. Not just a measurement of sound and vibration, but the frequency spectrum can be a beautiful composition tool as well. These days we have amazing tools for frequency analysis, so why not use them? By doing so, we are opening up the possibility to create new worlds with our ambient music and create deeper and more vibrant tracks than ever before. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to utilize the frequency spectrum in your compositions, as well as how to use frequency separation to achieve awesome results in all of your tracks. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris from Signs of Life, and on this channel, we talk about ambient, we talk about software, we talk about synthesizers, and everything related to ambient music production. So in this video, intended for the beginner to advanced beginner, I'm gonna show you how to compose using the frequency spectrum so you can add these techniques to your own productions. So if you like this kind of video, make sure you smash that like button on the way in and subscribe to this channel with the bell notification on so you can keep up to date with all the latest in the Signs of Life universe. As a reminder, this channel is also on Patreon, so if you want more extra tutorials, tons of extra presets, one-on-one -on -one ambient coaching, you can check it out. The link is down below in the description. By supporting me on Patreon, you're helping me to create more videos like this as well. That being said, let's get into the video, composing with the frequency spectrum. Enjoy. What's up guys, Chris here from Signs of Life and welcome back to another ambient tutorial. In today's video, we are gonna build an ambient track from scratch. The important thing about these videos is to help you build confidence in your producing. So hopefully you can build upon that confidence and make better music. Uh, I really don't think it matters if you produce ambient or not. I think these tutorials are reaching a lot more people and the goal as always is to use the skills and techniques that I provide in your own productions, all right? So we're gonna build an ambient track from scratch. It's suitable for all levels, uh, but mostly focused on the beginner to advanced beginner. And I also wanna make it clear that you do not need Ableton Live to follow along these tutorials. Uh, but if you do wanna purchase the template that I'm using, I'm using the utility template for Ableton Live, uh, you can certainly do so. So I'll leave the link down below in the description for that as well. So I'm gonna start here with a sample. And this sample comes from the Free to Use Sounds Library and the Brazil Night Market. It's a really lively sample, and I think it's a great place to start an ambient track. Check this out. I mean, that's just a wild scene, right? You can imagine my friend Marcel with his headphones on and his big microphones out and he's like walking through the alleyway. It's just crazy. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come over here and grab a resonator. Now, for those of you who don't use Ableton Live, um, there's another great resonator plugin uh, inside of Unfiltered Audio's Triad or Biome. So if you have either of those plugins, that's a great alternative. I'll just leave that out there. Um, but what I'm gonna do is we're playing in the key of B minor here today. So I'm gonna set my key, we're gonna play in B minor. My tempo is at about 71 beats per minute, okay? And I'm gonna use these resonators to dial in a chord. So we're gonna do like B1 and then plus seven, seven tones and plus five and maybe plus 12 here. And I'll go ahead and give this a play. The old resonator trick works really well. As you can see, I've turned off the production channel strip curve here. I'm using the utility template again. And uh, I'm going to inc increase the dry wet here. 
I really like that. So it kind of gives it a musicality, right? You still hear all that liveliness from the market. Now, another thing that we could do to this sample is we could take it up a notch and we could grab Paul X Stretch. Paul X Stretch is a free time stretching plugin. So I'm gonna grab Paul X Stretch. I'm gonna put it before the resonator and then I'm gonna turn the resonator off. Now, what I'm gonna do with Paul X Stretch is I'm going to record basically a portion of the sample and then stretch it out and then put it through the resonator. All right, check this out. So we're gonna turn on the uh, audio through here. Uh, we'll start at the beginning and hit record and there we go. All right, now we're going to play Paul Stretch and stretch this out. So as you can see, it starts default at stretch times two. Stretch it out to like nine or 10. And now let's turn back on those resonators. <laughs> and start messing with the gain here. Increase our root note gain. Actually, you guys can't see this, but I'm just increasing the gain here on these resonators. Increasing the dry weight. You can play around here. You can also play around with the uh, low pass filter here. There we go. Excellent. So now that we have Paul Stretch just kind of doing its thing in the background, right? Tighten this sample up here. There we go. We can grab Supermassive. Now, Supermassive is a free reverb. I assume that most people know about Supermassive at this point. Uh, I'm gonna grab Supermassive and we're gonna put it here on the end of our chain. We could even group these. And with Supermassive, I'm going to grab or just at least set it to an algorithm, right? Gemini is the mode that it's in now. And Gemini is an okay place, but I like to go down here to Libra. Long reverb, long repeating echoes, filter decay, medium attack. Sounds about right. So let's go ahead and increase the mix here. Increase the delay. Warp factor. Increase the feedback. And finally, the density. Oh, yeah. Now we're in a different place, right? So we went from the night market to a Paul Stretch night market, back into the resonators, and now, <laughs> now we're in Supermassive. Oh, that sounds great. Okay, so this is a great place to start an ambient track. Because from here, you can kind of feel out where the frequencies are, what would come next, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put a span on my master fader. Span is a free plugin uh, that allows you to monitor the frequencies of what's happening. You don't have to put the span on your master fader. You can put it on any track. And this is the free version of span. There's a span, I think it's called plus, uh, which is a lot better. You can like separate the channels out and stuff and do a bunch of crazy stuff, but like span free works, it's cool. So we have span up, we're good. We're seeing where we are and it looks really great because we have a nice mid-range icy drone. I love these icy drones, right? I was talking about that the other day. It was like, oh, you hear that just kind of comes in. Like we've built this organic pad style sample. Well, just, you know, from the night market or whatever, <laughs> the day market, I don't know. Anyway, so what would come next though? Like what's the next step? The next step is to start filling out the rest of the frequency spectrum. We often use, or I often talk about, the frequency spectrum as a compositional tool, right? Using frequency as something that you can grasp onto. Like, all right, we see what's missing. Now let's play with it, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab Vital. And we're gonna make a bass here to really set the tone and set the mood here. So to make a bass in Vital, start with just a default init patch, okay? And we're gonna put this onto basic shapes and make this a sine wave and lower down the pitch. So I'm gonna hold shift and just put it into negative 12. 
Then I'm gonna grab another wavetable. Now the other wavetable could be from the factory library if you want, if you don't have any other wavetables. I have certainly put out some wavetables for free, uh, but these come from my Patreon pack, uh, but you can grab wavetables from anywhere. They don't need to be super special, but wavetables are good. So if you want more wavetables, I have some on my Patreon, uh, more than a lot. So uh, anyway, with your second wavetable, what I want you to do is lower that also to negative 12. Okay. And then we're going to add some unison onto this one. Okay. Maybe four or five voices unison and lower the detune amount. Now what we have is a really low kind of slow moving waveform. And you'll see what this is going to turn into in just a second. So we're going to turn on the filter here, make it 24, lower down the resonance amount, which is this amount right here. And we're going to make sure that both oscillators are going through this filter. Now play a note. You hear that? I'm gonna flip over to my span here. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna lay in a note. And we're gonna flip over to the span. So find that note that you play. This is a low B. I think this is B1. Good choice, right? Hit B1, hit play. And come back over to our master fader and look at the span. Oh yeah. Wow. Now you can see that we have completely filled out that lower end part of the spectrum. That's beautiful because now we have like a nice healthy dip here between one and 400 Hertz, right? Let's come back over here. This is continuing to play. So I think what's happening is the Brazil market is continuing to play and the Paul stretch version, which is kind of interesting actually. Happy accident here on Signs of Life. I, I like that. I'm not sure I'm sold on it though. So maybe we can just like deactivate that clip. I hit zero on the keyboard in Ableton. Now we're just listening to the Paul stretch version, which I think is still interesting. We can turn up the volume here. So dealer's choice there. If you wanna just keep the, the regular one going or just use the Paul stretch one, there's other aspects of Paul stretch you can play with here. We've talked about tonal versus noise before, the filtering obviously. But you can see on the oscilloscope of that vital bass that we have some nice slow moving waveforms here. And by oscilloscope, I mean the analysis. Like it's up here in the corner, it's also down here in the bottom. Those are some nice moving waveforms. And what's happening is, is the unison, because it's like slightly detuned, is just moving those waves really slowly. If it was like detuned a greater amount, they'd move quickly. Look at this, you see that? We don't really want that. I mean, you might, I like it slow though. You can also ever so slightly move this wavetable to give it a little bit more motion. So I can take a random here and like slow it down to like four over one and move the position of our wavetable. Okay, make it bipolar. There we go. I love it when that sample opens up. Oh, it's so good. That's so good. So with just one instrument and one sample, we've got a really organic start to our track. Okay, we'll call this vital bass. And we'll call this uh, all stretch market. Cool. Now you can do all kinds of other stuff here. Like I said, this is not the only processing you, you might want to do. You might want to add more. And heck, if you're using Triad or Biome, that's, <laughs> those are great ways to add for the processing. We might talk about that later. Anyway, let's now add a pad here to fill out some of the different parts of the frequency spectrum here. I think if we make a pad, it's probably gonna land somewhere between 400 and 800 Hertz or 1K, like right here, okay? And it might even crawl all the way up to 10K. I don't know yet, but either way, it's gonna provide a nice contrast between the first initial and then this one, right? So let's grab Vital again, since we're doing a free, it's free-ish plugins here, ambient track tutorial. 
And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just create something from scratch, okay? Like I said, you do not need anything more than the factory wavetables because you have the wavetable editor here, okay? I have many tutorials out there about wavetable editor, you know, technique here. I'm just gonna do it really quickly so you guys can see the process. What I do is I right click and I randomize the harmonics. Then I randomize the phase, okay? And then I clear right on all of those harmonics. And you can just sort of play around here with, you know, phase maybe again. Randomize the phase again. And that's your first frame of your wavetable, okay? Click another keyframe and repeat that process. Randomize, randomize, clear right, and play around with the harmonics that you want. You can add more down here, you know. So now we have a contrast between this wavetable frame and this one, okay? You could go further by adding further keyframes in the middle, okay, and repeating that process again. Randomize, randomize, clear right, take away some of those harmonics, add some later ones, okay? Now we have this one to that one to this one. And now we can do one more time and randomize, randomize, clear right, chop down some of these harmonics, add some later ones for some extra flavor, and maybe even like, you know, play with some of these in the middle. And now we have that, okay? Maybe randomize the phase one more time. There we go, cool. So we have just created a really nice sounding wavetable from scratch for zero dollars in Vital, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and play this. I'm gonna put this through the pad bus and lower down the volume here, okay? We're just gonna give it a play. Okay, that's kind of what you want. You just want a interesting sounding wavetable. Doesn't have to be in, you know, you can switch the mode here, 2D to 3D, doesn't really matter. But what we can do with this is we can use that as our basis now for our pad sound, okay? Okay. Add a filter. Make sure the oscillator one is going through that filter, okay? And move the wavetable with an LFO or a random or an envelope, doesn't matter which. We'll take the LFO here and just pull it over. See this little handle that shows up, pull it over. And set it to sync mode and set it to four over one or eight over one, whichever you want, and play. Okay? You can make a separate envelope here, envelope two, right? And you can make this your filter envelope. So three and a half to four seconds of attack, take the sustain out, three or four seconds of decay, and that's all you need to create a nice filter envelope. Drag this over, let it go, and you're good. Right? And now our filter is opening up with that envelope. Our wavetable position is moving with this LFO, and we're in business. This is the jam here, okay. Add some unison voices, lower the detune amount. Come back over here, grab another instance of Supermassive. I'm also gonna use the Ableton stock delay before Supermassive. So if you have Ableton, great, grab the delay. If not, grab any delay of your choice. It's set by default on the dotted eighth note delay. So I'm gonna keep it there, okay? Dry wet around maybe 65 to 70%. Feedback around the same. Super massive, let's dial in another preset, okay? Let's pick another mode. Andromeda, mix up, delay up, warp up, feedback and density. Mod rate down depth down, okay? That's how quickly you can dial in a preset with Supermassive. It's really fast. You guys got that? All right, cool. So we have our little pad here going through a dotted eighth note delay into Supermassive. Ready? Here we go. That's 
a little contrasting pad. And it doesn't matter what style of music you produce, whether it's ambient, chill ambient, dub techno, whatever. You can use these techniques. This is all just bass level. I'm just playing some chords along with my track, but I built this all from scratch, just using basic tools. And that's why I do these videos, is so you can see the process, build the confidence that you can do it yourself, and then apply it to your own productions. It's that simple. Great, so we have this all set up. You see we have a beautiful oscilloscope response here, loving it. You can go way further with this, right? But let's go ahead and just lay down a chord here. I wanna go back to that analogy of using the frequency spectrum as a compositional tool, okay? So I'm gonna hold this chord here. I think it's a B sus4, if I'm not mistaken, or sus2, I think it's a sus2, okay? Not gonna get all technical on y'all. All right, bingo. So we're gonna leave that there and come back to the master fader and look at the span. Just as I predicted, this pad is landing right here. Okay? That's because I used the filter to properly make sure that I was gonna like not bleed out into higher frequencies. I, I knew where I wanted to place it. And this is called the art of frequency separation, right? I put my bass in the bottom, I put the pad right there in the lower mids, I put the sample in the mids, now I have all that high end room to still do whatever I want. This track could be a, anything. This could stay drone, it could go super chill, we could go a bunch of different directions with this. I, ooh, listen to that. That high end comes in. Gorgeous. All right, let's go ahead and make another pad thing, but this one's gonna be more like noise oriented, if you know what I'm saying. Because what I'm really feeling is like adding something on the higher end of the spectrum to really give you that visual, like, wow, oh yeah, that's what the high end is supposed to be like, and that's what you can do with the frequency spectrum, all right? So let's go ahead and use uh, Surge XT for this. This will be our Surge XT pad here, okay? Now Surge XT is another free synthesizer, but it's fine, I, I love the synth, it's really great. But a lot of people get intimidated right away, like, wow, this interface is just crazy. I might have thought the same thing at one point in time, but now I don't, okay? I'll show you why. We have two scenes here, A and B, they each have three oscillators, so you have basically six oscillators, and you have a mixer here. This is very important to the workflow of Surge XT. So I have it on scene A, okay? And we're on oscillator one, and it's unmuted, okay? Which means this is the only oscillator that we're hearing. Let's go from classic to wavetable. Let's pick another wavetable, like uh, something like, not these generated ones, I'm thinking like, there might be something interesting down here. I love these wavetables because they're all unexpected. FM. Oh, that's wild. I don't know why it's crackling as I do that. Huh. All right, we're gonna do. We're gonna go with. I don't even know how to pronounce that. The excluded shrieker. What does this sound like? <laughs> kind of let's increase the this is called improvising here increase the octave here this octave slider over here on the right increase the octave check out the morph oh this is totally gonna work out okay so you can use this morph slider to kind of move through the wavetable but what we want here is a really harmonic sounding digital edgy kind of thing and that's exactly what i got great Okay, come over here to the amp envelope, or the amp envelope generator here, right? Increase the attack. Just do your basic ambient pad recipe, right? Okay. 
And what we're going to do is add a couple of voices here. Take the detune on, leave it really slow. Okay. Make sure you turn on the filter by selecting a filter. Now we could either go low pass or high pass. I think I'm going to go high pass here. Okay. And the reason why I'm going to go high pass is because I'm going to turn this down. Right. And this is going to be kind of that really interesting FM style. You know, we can, we can morph this. This would be cool. Let's do that. Let's take an LFO and more and use it on the morph slider. How do you modulate in Surge XT? Big question. When I press my mouse on LFO one, like click it, boom, it all lights up all of these morph pitch, whatever sliders, every slider has a little dot in front of it. Now I can move that to the left or right. And you can see that we have modulation applied. Okay. Unclick the LFO one to take it out of modulation active mode. I don't know what they call that. But, you know. <laughs> oh, damn. That's good. Okay. So I just, all I did was, it was I took an LFO and I put it to the more slider. That's it. You can adjust the rate of this LFO because this LFO one is active. We can adjust the rate here. Oh, that's great. Oh, I love when a good plan comes together. <laughs> Wow, okay, let's also go ahead and add a second oscillator here. We're gonna turn off the mute button. And now we have two oscillators on one scene. All right, that's scene A. And we're gonna lower the pitch down. We're gonna turn the volume down and just make this, you know, a modern uh, triangle. Nothing crazy, right? Give it some weight. Oh my gosh, that sounds fantastic. Okay, now let's go ahead and grab a delay. We're gonna grab that Ableton delay again. We could even copy the other one over. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just gonna um, control, click, and drag. And we'll do this again, control, click, and drag. You could do this with send effects too. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm just shorting up the process here. So again, a uh, dotted eighth note delay here, a hall super massive with your own custom preset. And let's hear how this sounds. Oh. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, man. Oh my gosh, that is great. Octaves here, just use octaves. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's so good, that's so good. <laughs> All right, now let's go ahead and just lay those in. I'm going to lay those in. We'll add a couple more notes outside of the octaves, right? So we'll go these two, B1, B2. All right, just go ahead and lay these in. And maybe we'll set this onto one bar. Add like a, an E note. Oh, yeah, that's great. Fantastic, all right? Now let's go back to our span for frequency spectrum analysis. Now look, because I used a high pass filter on Surge XT, now we have the entire frequency spectrum filled out and the gateway is completely open. It's like, what direction do you want to take this? Anything is possible here. And that's really the point of this video is that if you can see me do something like this in real time, if this builds confidence in you to make you believe that anything is possible, and not only that, if it helps you believe that you can actually do this and that the gates of your own musicality are beginning to open, then what that's going to do is start to transform what's already inside you it is something greater than what you already are. Because the more we focus on this stuff, the more we focus on the vision of who you are and what you want to become through this music, the more that you begin to change and things begin to wake up inside of you. And every single day you wake up and go, gosh, I want to do that again. I want to do that again. I want to do that again. And by the time you get to the level that you want to be, you're going to look back and say, look, look where I started. It was from nothing. And now where are you? 
we're in a completely different place. And I was just showing you through music and through composition and technique that your wildest dreams in music, your, your, your greatest ambitions are all right there for you. Just by following the steps and using the tools that you have available, you can make this happen. And that's what I'm here to do, help guide you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Don't forget that what you focus on and that vision that you have inside will become reality the more you center in and focus your energy right onto that point. It's a law of attraction, right? It'll just pull itself right towards you. It doesn't matter how far away it is or how far away you think it is, whether that's making one track, one album, getting signed by a record label. If it's that, if you can see it, if you can name it, you can tie a rope to it and you can pull it in. And it's only a matter of time for you and your goal to connect with each other. If you want to learn more, feel free to join me on Patreon. There I do tutorials like this every single week of the calendar year. It's a great place to be. I have tons of samples on there for free and paid since. Tons of presets. And most of all, I do one-on-one -on -one ambient coaching. So if you wanna really dive into your own personal process and get that little bit of extra help, you can find me on Patreon or visit me on my website, www.signsoflife.com. I really appreciate your time and energy, and I hope that this tutorial has inspired you to get out there and make your dreams come alive. This is it. It's high time for this stuff right now. Don't wait. Make it happen. I'll be back again soon with more ambient tutorials. In the meantime, take good care, you guys. Stay inspired. And as always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground. My name is Chris from Signs of Life. And I'll see you guys in the next one.